because they encapsulate so many different things. The super specific yet general definition for a differential equation, an equation that contains an unknown function and some of its derivatives. That's it. Here's a differential equation you've probably seen before. Probably seen before, right here. Has anybody seen that before? What do you, what do you, okay, what do you think T stands for? Just a guess. Time. What do you think P stands for? Always? Nope. <laughs> you would have seen this in biology, maybe. Population. Oh, always keep population. So what does this say? It says the rate of change of population with respect to time is what? Is proportional to the, directly proportional to the population. This essentially says the population grows faster and faster as the, as the population, not as the population gets bigger. K is a constant. K is just floating there. So as P gets bigger, the rate of change of P gets bigger. So this, what kind of function would you call it? This would be a exponential function. This is not a linear growth. The rate of change of the population gets bigger, so the acceleration is positive on this thing. The acceleration of the population growth is positive. So from this, I could ask you, what is the function for population with respect to time? Try that. Given this differential equation, without any sort of pre-instruction, see if you can tell me this. If that right there is the rate of change of the population, what is the population with respect to time? What is the population with respect to time? Try that right now. I don't know, something like this maybe, I don't know. Okay, let's say, let's just take the integral of both sides. So if you take the integral of both sides, what happens? 1 over k times what? ln p equals t plus some constant t. Do you, some constant c. Do you agree with that? Right? Nice. Are we okay with that? So what should I multiply both sides by? Biggie, put the calculator down. Biggie. What should I multiply by? K. Guys, stop talking, kids. So what do you end up with? K t plus k times C. What are we trying to isolate? P. So this means it's going to be e to the kt plus kc is equal to what? P. So let's simplify this here. How do we go about simplifying this? So what is this right here? What could you just call this right here? Can you call that anything in particular? It, is, is that a variable? It's a constant of some kind, right? Could we just call it some constant? Let's call it, I don't, what do you want to call it? Like, let's call it C with a red C. How about that? Okay. <laughs> That's actually really dangerous. We shouldn't do that, right? So let's call it, I know, D. Great. So what do we now have? We have P of T is equal to D times what? E to the KT. You're going to see this all over the place, all over the place. This is a function that models the population with respect to time where the population growth increases with propor direct proportion to the population. Yes, Tom. So we're going to get low 1 minus oh, C and E. So C, E to the low D high. What's the derivative of the top? C, E to the low D high minus high. What's the derivative of the low? Negative C, E to the T. So what do you have to do? And then what is it over? 1 minus C, E to the T squared. This up. So you end up with, and there's no, there's no like super clever way to do it. You're just going to end up with c e to the t minus what c squared e to the what two t plus c e to the t right. Thank you. Plus what? Yeah, all over one minus. What's nice about the numerator? Yeah, and what are you left with now? 2c e to the all over 1 minus c e t e to the t squared. Okay. You need to check the right side. So what was with the right side written out was 1 half what? So here's the right side. 1 half what? y squared is it minus 1? 
minus 1, and we know that y is equal to 1 plus ce to the t over what? ce to the t. So you take this and you plug it in. So what do you end up with? 1 half times 1, well, that's not that bad, 2ce to the, no, e to the t, plus c squared e to the over 1 minus what? c e to the plus c squared e to the minus what? 1. Nice. We hope. So it, we will. <laughs> That's a definitive. Gosh, I hope so. So we end up with what? 1 plus 2 c e to the t plus c squared e to the minus 1 plus 2 c e to the t minus c squared e to the all over 1 minus 2c e to the t plus c squared e to the 2t. Two 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 now, does anything cancel? 2c um, yes. e to the t? No, no. They don't, but they, they come together, though, right? What does cancel, though? Kills with that, and the 1s go away, right? So what are you left with? 1 half times 4c e to the t over, and how can we rewrite the denominator? What was it? 1 minus c e to the t squared, and what is that going to equal? 2 c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t, and that is the right side, and what do we notice? They're the same, so l is equal to r, so true, yay, we're correct, nice. Yeah, so 2 is equal to 1 plus c e to the 0 over 1 minus c e to the 0. So 2 is equal to 1 plus c over 1 minus c. How do we figure that out? 2 minus 2c two is equal to what? 1 plus c. So what do we end up with? 1 is equal to? 3c, so c is equal to? So when c is equal to one-third, you can get the specific solution. So what is the solution going to be? Exactly. You just plug it in. So one-third e to the... Oh, over yes. Yes. No, no, but hold on. This is really easy because we already proved and figured out what the general solution is. Then you'd have to find it out. That's the thing. They're going to help you with this at the beginning. How?